We're on the set of Hocus Pocus 2, talking to gaffer extraordinaire Jay Yaller. Jay's put in an awesome rig and a combination of the new Quasar products, R2s and double R's. Uh, you can see the big soft boxes behind it that we'll talk about, and also using a lot of uh, light panel hards and two by one light panels. When we first came into this space, they had already started building the platform. It's not you know, a rectangular building with catwalks, uh, it's this rounded structure, and they thought, by all intents and purposes, that it would be easy to rig to things, but it's given us some limitations on what we can do from the sides, as well as the ends. But the first thing I knew we'd have to do is put in a lot of 20 by 20 soft boxes. So we have 16 of them up there, and they're five feet deep. They're surrounded with ultra bounce, black on the outside, white inside, ultra bounce on the top. Uh, 12, only 12 eight foot R2s in each one. My name's David Cambria and I am the rigging gaffer of the Disney feature Hocus Pocus 2. I mean, everybody does soft boxes. I mean, it's every big movie you see soft boxes everywhere. You know, a lot back in the day, we'd do soft boxes with space lights and you need tons of power. You'd need multiple feeds to each box. They're very heavy. These are probably the lightest soft box I've ever rigged. It's 12 tubes. We fed a multi-cable to it. It's all True One connections. We put a True One breakout on it, and you just daisy chain them, and you're basically running 12 tubes on one mult cable and some Ethernet data. And you got a great output, and it's all full color. And once you put the ultra bounce around it and you control the light with the LCD, it's a fully controllable light source that's super soft and a beautiful source of light. Yeah, I think, uh, I think most people would have put a lot more tubes in there, but you know, no matter what you do on a set this size, you, you have a budget. There again, it's a huge set and it needs to be lit properly. Knowing that we weren't shooting any day stuff up here, it was all magic hour yeah. or night. I knew that, I knew what 12 eight foot R2s would give me from 20 by 20 soft boxes, 12 tubes brings this whole thing at this 16 of these up a level i'll probably never have them at full right now i have them set at 25 percent level for our magic hour look so we sh shoot this set magic hour and we'll shoot it at night um because the scene progresses into night i'm starting them at 7,000 degrees kelvin for our magic hour and then as time progresses in the storyline i'm of course bringing that kelvin to a higher level, probably up to 12,000 degrees Kelvin in, by the end, and then dim down a little bit more. As we layer through other parts of this rig, um, as you notice in the background below the low side, we have a nice atmosphere in here, and the glow is coming from a whole ring of the new eight foot R2 Quasar Science fixture. The, I push those all the way back to the backing and push them but they're on into the set. That's right, this side of the backing, right close to the bagging, but aiming into the set. And all it is is we use the, the new rail with the sliding pin, super easy. Goes on a C-stand, plug it in, run some data, and you got a beautiful glow, fully controllable, right around the set. So the other part of this rig that we did was hang, we hung 30, one by one Gemini hards with a, the soft diffuser. Um, it's a very punchy light, really good color, um, super easy to rig. But you know, these, one by one Gemini's with the diffusers, uh, you would not, you'd be hard pressed to find another light that would work as well. Well, look how even it is. It's really, the backing's over 500 feet long. And I'm only using 30 Gemini's to do what you're seeing here. So now, of course, you, you won't see these lights unless we're shooting without the backing, but this backing will be covering those. Yes. Um, and then this is what our moonlight will look like. Hey, Doc, can you turn on 262, please, at full? Okay, so that is going to be our moon. That looks great. Now, when the when the actors get in here and you start doing some of the, the, the action and dramatic narrative, what will you use as ground sources for them for key lights? So my go-to lights on set generally are quasars and Geminis now. I use 
So like the two by one Gemini. I have yeah. two sitting there waiting right there. And Shamaris. And then you'll put those through a, a bigger rag. A bigger rag, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In here, probably eight by, maybe a 12 by if I have the room to put it, but I'm not, I don't want to beat the grips up too much because of all the trees. I'm really impressed with that, those, those two by one Gemini's. I yeah. think they did a really great job with those and how lightweight they are is great. Yeah, they're pretty good. Yeah. They're punchy. Um, we also have, when all this happens, we also have a bunch of lightning strikes coming in and oh, throw okay. because there's going to be a lightning effect when they appear. Mm -hmm. um, so that'll all happen as well. We are here on the set of Hocus Pocus 2 with uh, world-renowned cameraman Elliot Davis and is kind enough to give us a little time to talk about the LED lighting he's doing on the show. Hi Elliot, How, how's it going? Good. 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 So all that control now we have in the DI suite um and now with the advent of the where the led technology is going and having that full color control while you're shooting on set it's almost like there's two opportunities of grading yeah it's like a level one level two yeah well, maybe you miss it on the first level you, you can, can fix it on the second <laughs> yeah exactly um, it's just the expansion of the world of color of what's possible you know because the on set is one thing and then when you go to the DI, it's like that. It's like ever expanding, which I think is wonderful. To me, this is just an extension of that in putting what you were doing in post into actual practice in production. And, you know, it, to me, it's a reflection of the modern reality of the 21st century with the, the variation of color temperatures and, you know, uh, just the mixture of lighting that you find in the real world. Well, it's like having a palette. It's yeah. like becoming a painter. Now, these lights right here, they're for all of what? Those are the one by ones for the backdrop. Yeah. Those actually look good right now. Yeah, that <laughs> yeah. oh, looks good. I know, it's like the roll of white, so it's a nice even backdrop. I mean, what we should do right now is probably look at this. I took a picture of it, it looks good. Before we we can get the right density in the background like this, just even looking over here. I mean, I would believe this is magic now. See, you know, pull the wiggle. Uh-huh. Yep, oh, it looks good. 